Welcome back, everybody. We're here with Truck and Trailer Tuesday on Tractor Time with Tim, and we're here again with Trooper Hoover. And I'll be honest, I'm not looking forward to this particular episode. <laughs> you know, this is like going to school and you're getting your your test graded right in front of you. I'm a little I'm a little nervous about what's going to be happening here. Today we're going to do an, a bit of an inspection of our trailer connection. Well. Hopefully I won't get a ticket. <laughs> no, we really want to see what, 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 do you, what do you inspect? If I'm pulled off the side of the road for whatever reason, what are you gonna, what are you gonna look at with my trailer? Well, and, and that's a good question, because like I said, when it comes to mixing of state laws and federal regulations, there's, it's, it's really hard to break it down and, and figure it out. So a lot of what we're going to explain, yeah, if you want to be technical, it may be a federal reg or maybe, but it's safety. So why okay. not? Why not just apply it to everything? You know, uh, people could sit there and say, well, that's a commercial thing or this is not. It, again, it's about safety. So this is your typical bumper mount setup. It's not a fifth wheel. It's it, it's not a uh, yeah. I mean, we get a, a pental hook. Yeah, okay. pental hook. There's there's what I. <laughs> we usually call them bumper pull. Yeah, and bumper we'll get some pull. commenters say that's not on the bumper, but that's really what we refer yeah, to. Yeah, it, it, uses... it's it's bumper pull. It's not it's not the pental hook system. Yeah. It's not a fifth wheel. It's not a gooseneck. So, this is typically the vast majority of what. Uh, private individuals are going to run across. So, okay. what are we looking nowadays with with Wait. trailers? So we're going to be inspecting right in here most of the time, right? Yeah. I've been wanting to check out this tunnel you've got under here. Can we oh, the o the oil change pit. Is, is that what you do? You no. Are you going to give me an oil change? No, <laughs> no, we don't do that. But <laughs> as much oil as you can see has been dripped down there. We ought to charge for an oil change. But Come no. on, can, can we? Go but yeah, there? yeah. Let's go down and let's take a look at the uh, underside and see what we can find out. So we're going to get the go. What is a pit in your happy I'm excited about this. It's cold down here. You better watch because he's checking out everything under He's looking truck. under my truck. I've never looked under it like that. Maybe we need one of these in our shed, Christy. Why would the drive shaft be so nasty rusty? That road salt. See the 5, corrosion 000, on the transfer case? 5,000 miles we have yeah. on this thing. It's like they didn't paint it. Yeah. I don't believe they did paint that. Uh, that back one's been painted. Yeah. Uh-oh. I'm not fully tight, hey? Doesn't, doesn't look like it's squeezed all the way, does it? Okay, so I've been putting it off as long as I can. Let's hear the bad news. <laughs> well, that's not, not really bad news. Let's just look at it as just some just some ways to kind of revamp what you're doing down here. So, okay. So first off, what we want to look at is, of course, the electrical connections. Make sure you got adequate length no rubbing, no chafing, nothing in the, the wire itself. Okay. So that's looking good. Now we're going to check the major components of the, the hitch assembly. You got the pin. Do you have the cotter pin? Is it looking good? We're coming back. Do you have now, the proper size Do you look at the weight rating on this? Uh, somewhat, but with really roadside enforcement and not being able to have a good tongue weight, it, it's kind of really hard to look at, but we kind of take that in consideration as far as how's it mounted, how's it look, and in looking at all this, three inch drop, that's not that common for the everyday, so we're seeing, hey, this is extra heavy duty, we got the proper ball, um, we're kind of looking down here, is the nut in place, is it good and tight, is it tight enough, a little bit of space in there, but it looks like, you know, that's pretty well as good as it go. And then we're coming up here, checking to make sure it's properly latched, locked in, secured. And then we're checking the bolts out here to make sure that they're not loose, missing, broke, anything like that. Then we come down to how's the, how's the trailer, the emergency breakaway equipment. 
So as you can see here, you've got it in an X pattern, which is exactly the way it needs to be. And something else we can kind of come through and check it with is we have uh, chain gauges. So we can come through, we can look, we can come up to uh, a good, good uh, length of chain here, and we can see, and then we can come in and basically what I'm just doing is going, okay, it's a 5 16 so I can see, hey, that's the size. Well, you can see the opposite size here. It says out of service or OOS. What that basically means is in the federal regulations, when a safety chain or any type of chain is used, if it's wore down in excess of 20%, it's gonna be as an out of service. So that's what we're looking for when we're talking we're talking chain wear. So you can see we've had some cases where this chain looks like it's rubbed a little bit. So I'm just gonna come in with the 5 16 side and just kind of work this chain over, just kind of checking anywhere with some rubbing on it. You so can that's 20% less than the that's 5 16 Exactly, that's 20% okay. less. So you can see we can kind of come in here and you, hopefully you can kind of see, see how that's flattened off a little bit? That's probably a pretty good indication, hey, that's got some wear and you can kind of see we can just about get it on there not enough that you know if this was a definite commercial vehicle would we be placing it out of service no but you can definitely see hey you're reaching that point to where any more lucky strikes that could become so a we've, could we've become done a this problem. by dragging it on the ground mm -hmm. um, when we've you know just had a heavy load or something mm -hmm. we drag it on the ground do you have a problem if we curl the chain to... No, that's, I'm glad you asked that because here in the last few months, the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance, they're the ones that basically help administer the rules that the FMCSA puts out. A lot of acronyms, but basically they've put out and said that if, if an owner, operator, whoever, driver wants to put just a little bit of a twist in the chain, in these type chain only, not cargo securement, that if you want to put a twist or two in there to pull them up, you can do that. So that's something that's something that you can think about in the future. So next thing we're going to look at is this little cable right here. Probably not, if you're commercial, you do this, you probably heard of something called the emergency breakaway device. There's a, a little switch located over here, the cable, got these grommets. And so what we see real quick is this needs to be independent and separate because if the trailer, if this would fail and it's gonna rip these hooks off and this is ripped off, then it's not gonna activate the emergency brakes. Okay, so I so, can't have this hooked in here yes, with this Yes, that needs to be somewhere a little bit different. Somewhere maybe hooked a little different on the, the reese hitch, on the bumper, but just trying to, and then kind of check it for any damage because if you got it somewhere and it pulls hard or one of these would fail, that's basically not going to activate. So it's supposed those to pull this brakes. switch out. Yes, basically and lock up the brakes. Mm -hmm. It would pull, and it would in turn pull that switch out, and then that would complete the the connection, and it would activate the electric brakes on the trailer. Okay. So, and with that being said, up here on the top, you would come in, and this is what houses that battery. So we can see here the switch is missing and we have no good way of checking whether that uh -oh. battery's got any current or not. Uh -oh. So if you was a commercial enterprise, this right here not working could be enough to place the vehicle out of service. So that's how important it is to have the electronic or the electric brakes working and make sure that switch cabling and all that is the proper location length. So if we detected anything up here as far as uh, improperly done here, improper ball size, just things of that nature. So just really making sure and hooking it up, hooking it up right. Anything else? Got that up. We talked about that. Now, up here on my electrical cable, mm -hmm. it's come apart a little bit. The, some of the insulation, are you going to? We're not really worried about that much because uh, what we're really worried and looking for and that's what we're talking about right there, is if there was a lot of times these electrical cables being a lot longer, they will drag the ground, and that's where we see a lot of open wire, bare wire. When it comes to electrical, if we see any type of bare wire, that's gonna result in a violation. But just a little bit of pulling out, as long as it's in there, it's proper, it's not gonna come out, and all the lights are working, 
you're going to be all right. Do you do any inspection back on the axles of the trailer, springs, that type of thing? Yes. So now we're back under the axles of the trailer, and uh, Krista got to come down here and join us, I think. Yeah. So what do we look at back here? Obviously, being in a scale facility, we can really get underneath and, and, and really check things out. So some of the big things we're, we're really checking on is frames, cross members, looking for any types of crack, uh, older trailers, r excess rusting, the point the frames are rusting through, things of that nature. Since we're under here and we're looking at electric brakes, we're going to be real inclined to come over check the hubs and be checking any electrical wiring. So what we're really looking at here is we've, we're on the axle in, we're checking out the electrical wiring, making sure it's in place. We have other ways to check the electric brakes and we're up on the top side. But as well as anybody, you, you park a trailer, you let it sit a while, mice, cats, dogs, whatever, and I've, I've got a dachshund that just loves pulling wires out. But we're just checking to make sure that these wires are in place and that the brake ends, everything is where it needs to be. We're checking the axles, the axle tubing. In this case, the uh, there's not really a suspension component. It's just directly on the frame. So then we're coming back and we're just checking these, these out. And we just work our way down. So like here, we're kind of looking. We're just going to check these wires are sticking out just a little bit. So we just kind of check them out, make sure there's no excess Make sure there's looks no like wear. That might rub, doesn't it, over time? Yeah, over time. So, you know, it's just a matter of getting up there once in a while, checking those. And again, kind of going over to the other side and just checking the wires because we will get under here where folks have had uh, trailers sit too long, trailer brakes lock up, so they just get, get under here, snip the brakes, and just take off down the road. So. So those are just some of the things that we're looking for. And the big thing is the frames, the cross members, just making sure that everything's where it appears it needs to be. And stuff like this, cargo ramps, this is what's considered loose dunnage or at dunnage of the vehicle. So we're also checking to make sure that the dunnage is properly stored, secured, and the brackets are in place to keep those from falling out down the road. So that's kind of just some of the things we're looking for underneath the uh, standard trailers. Yeah, that's that's very helpful. It looks to me like I have a couple of items to work on. My breakaway box. It's very embarrassing to me, Christy, because it's been working and I use the little charge button all the time. Yeah. And then this morning I went out. I hear that no a lot. Worky. I, I, I hear no that worky. a lot. That's the, that's the number one excuse. It was working this morning. And it that's the frustrating thing. I knew I was coming here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. So the breakaway box I got to fix, and then I have to fix the uh, the breakaway box yeah, release. The, I don't know what you would call it. The, yeah, the emergency breakaway cable. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's the Making biggest, sure the biggest that, items. Yep. Hey, this I think is very helpful to our viewers. Uh, guys, take a look under your trailers. Mine looks a lot worse than what I expected. It's only a year or two old. I think two years old now. Yeah. And the salt and just other road hazards and things, and yeah. they, they bother them more than what you think. So take a look under your trailers, make sure everything's ready to go. And definitely, if you have a trailer that sits, um, I know I live in a rural area. Like I said, critters will get in there, mice. Um, we've, uh, we've had trailers come in, brakes are inoperative. They take it apart in the parking lot to try to get them repaired, full of mice nest. All the wires have been ate up, chewed up. So. Just little things like that, just to, just to think yeah. about. Now, you have a Facebook page where you go through mm -hmm. a bunch of this stuff. Absolutely. Uh, if you go to Indiana State Police Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division, it'll pop up. Um, like I said, my main uh, focus is commercial drivers out there, but this is safety information. Or if you're just uh, Joe Blow, you know, don't have a commercial company, but still have a question when it comes to a vehicle or, or anything like that, shoot me a message and we'll get those questions answered for you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.